Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Luckiest Peach Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel. The Lucky Peach. Things sound differently to me ever since I got these new headphones. This isn't an ad. I don't know why I said it like it was an ad. I don't know. It's They're over the ear. They're Audio Technica, so that's how you know it's good shit. But they're also over the ear, so it blocks out noise differently. Um, so I think I'm talking louder. I don't actually know, but also I, I can hear less, so I don't hear myself as well as I did before. And I mean, like these are better headphones, but, uh, I, I don't know. It's going to take some getting used to. The only time I've like used over the ear headphones in the past is like on set because I need to be able to hear everything coming out of the headphones on set. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, I'm sorry. I was just thinking out loud, but I mean, y'all are used to that. I don't know why I still apologize for that. <sighs> Welcome to March. I don't remember the last time we had a Streaming Wars episode come out on the first of the month. I'm going to check right now because now I'm thinking about it. Um, oh, in February. Well, I guess that makes sense. There's there's 28 days. Okay, but prior prior to February what was the last one that came out on the first of the month. I am going to go through the rest of last year. Oh, the last one was June. Yeah, anyways. Go to today. Anyways. Yeah, that... I feel like an idiot now, obviously. The last time that an episode dropped on the first of the month was last month. Because that's how a 28 day work month works. I don't know. I've seen, I've seen, like, I feel like society is too, has progressed too much for us to do this, but I've seen uh, research that shows that, like, if we changed the months to be like 29 days, I think we could make all of them 29 or something like that. I don't know. Then, I don't know. I, all I've, all I, what I know is I've seen research that shows if we change the structure of months, the way that we look at the year and divide it up would make a lot more sense than it does now. But I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm far enough into adulthood that I don't have an issue with it. I do sometimes forget which months have 31 days, but I don't know. I learned a trick from a from a game show once. I think it was like Idiot Game. It was called Idiot Game. Is that what it was called? I don't know. I think it was. Is it called the Idiot Game? Idiot, idiot test, idiot test. I learned it from idiot test where you can like go based on your knuckles to figure out which months have 31 and 30 days. Cause like when you like, so it's like January on your, your index finger knuckle is January. And then the in-between space is February. And then the next knuckle on your middle finger would be March. Anyways, I learned that. That's just a random thing that I remembered. I don't know. I learned there, there's some hacks about things like that that I've learned from the wildest of places. Um, but you know, there are hacks that I've learned. That one's not really useful, but I mean, at least not to me now. I'm sure to like maybe like a kid that would be really useful. Or if you have trouble remembering months and how many days are in each month, then yeah, that, that actually would be helpful. Um, now I'm at the point of recording where I'm just randomly grabbing shit that's on my desk for no reason. I just grabbed this book that I read, which I will recommend it actually, but I was grabbing it to move it out of the way because I just have a pile of stuff where there shouldn't be. So, you know, naturally I chose right now to do that. It's like, it's like me picking things up on my desk while I'm recording is like when you're on the phone with somebody and you're just pacing around and randomly grabbing and cleaning the, you know what I mean like when you just do weird things when you're on the phone like walk on the roof I mean there's a vine about that that's why I said it but you know what I mean like 
anyways, yeah, uh, this is called uh, If Not Winter by Ann Carson. Well, it's not by Ann Carson. It is basically just a book full of every single fragment of a of a song by Sappho, uh, who was a um, a lyricist slash poet um, in 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 seventh uh, century BC. Or would that be fifth? I think it would be seventh. I don't know. It says Sappho lived on the island of Lesbos from about six thirty BC. Yeah. Well, I'll just go ahead and read the back. It says, uh, she was a musical genius who devoted her life to composing and performing songs of the nine books of lyrics Sappho is said to have composed. None of the music is extant, and only one poem has survived complete. All the rest are fragments. In If Not Winter, Carson presents all of Sappho's fragments in Greek and in English. Brackets in space give the reader a sense of what is absent as well as what is present on the papyrus. Carson's translation illuminates Sappho's reflection on love, desire, marriage, exile, cushions, bees, old age, shame, time, chickpeas, and many other aspects of the human situation. I recommend it. I really like it. I've been I've been looking for like a big compilation type book of Sappho. Um, this one, like Barnes and Noble, has like one of their you know, like their brand, their, I guess, what, what is it called? A distributor for books, um, their label, uh, of Sappho. And it's just, it's just all over plays. There's or not all over plays, all over songs and fragments, but it's a small book and it's like $16. Like it's very, very small. Like it's just, it's just straightforward, just the poetry. And I have put, a, I never bought it because as much as I wanted to read Sappho, that didn't seem worth it to me, but this is $18 and you know, you not only get each, every single fragment in both Greek and in uh, English, you know, you get, you know, brackets and spaces that let you know where things were missing and you get like a whole introduction and um, notes for some of the lines like a, I guess like an index, not really an index, but notes, but kind of an index that further goes into like detail of like trying to figure out what she meant by that or what she did mean by that. And then there's like a, a, a glossary of like all the names that are mentioned in her fragments, like every single name, like from Aphrodite to like someone named Anactoria, who was probably like a friend of Sappho's. And then there's like an appendix. Like, it's really cool. It's, I, I really recommend this. Y'all should read this. It's worth every penny. We love Sappho, our LGBTQ icon. In case you're wondering, her name is where the term sapphic comes from. And the island of Lesbos is where we get the term lesbian from. So... I would consider Sappho essential queer reading. And if you're gonna read her, I suggest this book. Because like obviously I could have just Googled all of it and found a PDF of it. But that's not as fun, you know? I've done that in the past. I did that with like the poetic edda. And it just it isn't as fun looking for a PDF that's just the straightforward information. I'd rather I I'd rather get something that has some like modern day insight and interpretation added to it through like an afterword and a introduction. Anyways, also going through cleaning my desk, I have some Sudoku books that I need to throw away or I guess recycle because I filled them up. Oh, ooh, ooh, another book I read. Um, hi, welcome, welcome to my book podcast. No, I'm just kidding. Um, is Address Unknown, uh, which is a really famous book, but I only just now found it. So I didn't know about it until recently because I just saw it on the buy one, get one half off table at Barnes and Noble. And I like picked it up because I was like, oh, it's a small book. That looks, I don't know. I see tiny little dainty books and I'm like, what? And then I read the back and I was like, actually, I think I might enjoy this. And I did. I loved it. It is a five peach 
five pages out of five, five out of five pages book. Uh, I mean, it was it was written in the thirties. In uh, let me double check what year thirty eight. Um, I don't know this this specific publication is from twenty twenty one. Uh, and it has an introduction by Margot Livesey and an afterword by um, Catherine Cressman Taylor's son. So it's I think it's also the first or maybe the second publication that has her full name because when she first um, published it in 1938, she just went by Cressman Taylor because that was people weren't buying people weren't interested in uh, women authors. So yeah, I also have the Epic of Gilgamesh that I'm struggling to get through. Some some of these like ancient epics are hard for me to like get through, hard for me to get motivation to read because they are almost too detailed. Like if you've ever read, I think it's, uh, what is it? What is, what is it called? I'm gonna feel dumb. I'm gonna feel dumb. Oh, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. It's extremely specific for no reason. Um, that is also hard to get through because of how specific it is. So, you know, really, and the way that we write has really, you know, improved. It was a good read, but it was too specific and it was very confusing. I also have um, Nella Larson's Passing on my nightstand. I haven't started it yet, though. I really enjoyed the movie. Um, I'm not going to talk about how um, about the movie very much though because I watched it as a Spirit Awards screener. So I don't want to give my opinions on it. I mean, but if you follow me at Letterboxd at Lucky Peach, um, if I rewatch it at any point, which I'm sure I will, because I really liked it, you know, I'll probably re all the movies that I watched as screeners during the period of time that I was watching the screeners, I didn't write. I, some of them I put little brief reviews, but nothing specific enough. Um, but I didn't rate them uh, just to keep my neutrality about each of the films. Um, unless it was like a film that I watched before I became a member of Film Independent, like Drive My Car uh, and uh, Petite Mama because I watched Petit Maman and like Come On, Come On and The Humans and Red Rocket, those I watched back in November at uh, HCAF, so it's a different, different thing. But anyways, yeah, I also have a Ram Das book on my desk that I found randomly at Barnes & Noble because I have Be Here Now, but this one's called Journey of Awakening. So yeah, I love Be Here Now. I highly recommend. I just recommend Ram Das. Ram Das. Ram Das, Ram Das, recommend him in general. I also have a container of honey butter from Sprouts. It hasn't been sitting here for very long. I realized by saying that it gives the impression that it's been sitting there for a while. It's been sitting there for like 10 minutes. It's fine. It's still cold. I don't know. Hi, welcome to my life. I feel like my ADD has, I think, I think I need a higher dose of Vyvanse. I don't know though. I gotta think about it. I don't know, I should probably make a appointment with my neurologist. I'll see though. I don't know because it's expensive even with, even with insurance. A 30 day supply costs me $25 with the pharmacy. And because it's a controlled substance that I have to, it doesn't have, automatic refills. I have to request the refill from my doctor instead of from the pharmacy because there are no refills basically. And then when I refill it, when it, basically when I request the refill, I get charged $10, which is fine because it's a controlled substance. So I can, I, I can understand that. Basically it's, you know, a security factor, but it's expensive. And I'm pretty sure I'm about to run out of insurance about to lose insurance so I don't know if higher dose would help me I mean it would but it would be more expensive welcome to America 
welcome to America where I have to decide if if I should get a higher dose of ADD medication because it would help me. Um, but the reason I don't want to is because it would cost me more money. Welcome to shitty hair healthcare in America. Anyways. Anyways. Welcome to Streaming Wars. <laughs> I have like a a Discord meeting at 1.30 and it is currently 12.45, so I need to get my shit together. Anyways, welcome to Streaming Wars. If you're new here, this is where, this is Streaming Wars, is the episode each month where I begin the month by uh, going over everything, uh, releasing on Netflix, HBO Max, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, Amazon Prime Video, in theaters, and everything being added to the Criterion Collection every month. Um, yeah. I think I think I asked last month if y'all wanted me to add Showtime, but I don't think I got a response about that, so I'm not going to this month, but I will add that question again. If you're listening on Spotify, um, there's now an option to add a question, so I'll have that question up on Spotify on the Spotify page for this episode, um, as well as you can just leave a comment on YouTube or or uh, tell me on Twitter at Lucky Peach or uh, email me at luckiestpeachpodcast at gmail.com. Well, now I'm curious to see. Spotify, can you, like, stop changing the layout of your main page? The luckiest peach. I'm gonna check it out. I never. Oh my god, I love magnetic fields. I haven't seen that being in a minute. No! Oh my god. Sorry. Anyways, I'm gonna. Because I always look at the podcast through. Like, okay, yeah. If you go to the page for the episode, I don't know if it shows up if you just click play on the episode separately. But if you go to the actual page for the episode, the question will show up there. Um, and I have a few questions on a few episodes recently, so if you want to answer those, you don't even have to listen to the episode. Um, but yeah, I never actually... I never knew how that worked on the Spotify because I just see the Anchor page for the podcast, which is owned by Spotify, but I don't... Okay, thank you, Anchor. Go away. Oh, no, go away. Anyways, I just look at the anchor page, so I never actually see. I haven't seen the Spotify side of things. Anyways, but yeah, there will be a question on Spotify. But if you're not listening on Spotify, of course, you can let me know in the comments on YouTube, through email, on Twitter, whichever way you would like to contact me. Anyways, but yes, um, and also, if you're looking at the title of this episode, I was gonna try to come up with, like, a clever one, but I realized I didn't want to look insensitive, um, because, you know, somebody who's just scrolling past the episode is gonna see the title, they're not gonna know the context of it, if they're, you know, if a lot of people aren't gonna listen to it, they're just gonna scroll past it, so they might just see the title, not understand the context, and then think I'm insensitive, so I just kept it simple. I will be have uh, I will have links in the description of this episode um, for ways that you can help Ukraine help Ukraine make Russia their bitch because it's shitty that we're in this situation that well not we that they are in this situation in the first place but the fact that a nation that small was able to take on or has been able to take on the behemoth that is Russia. I don't know if you all have seen how big Russia is. It's fucking huge. Um, even though a lot of it is inhab uninhabited, still, it's huge. There's a lot of people there. They're, they're very powerful. But the fact that they've been able to take that on, that behemoth on, and have so far succeeded in making Russia their bitch is like, it's a feat. It's one of the biggest feats in, like, international relations I've ever fucking seen. 
And not only that, President Zelensky is, you know, I don't fan over politicians. I don't really give a shit about politicians. Um, you know, I do my duty as an American citizen and I vote for, you know, when I vote, I vote for whoever I think is more deserving, which doesn't mean I'm a fan for them. I hate that, you know, in the last six, six-ish years, it's turned into that of like people thinking about people, I mean, Republicans thinking that you have to be a fan of the, the politician you vote for, which isn't the case. That's not how it works. It's you just vote for who you think is more deserving and who's going to be more capable of that job. That's all it is. Um, do I like Biden? No. But did I think he was more capable and more competent? Yes. So I voted for him. Anyways, I also wanted to get that piece of shit out of office. But anyways, that's what I'm saying. I don't fan for politicians, but I have a fuck ton of respect for Zelensky. He is... Oh, it's, you don't, like, I don't, I'm sure it's happened, obviously, because it used to happen in, like, medieval times that, you know, the king would go to war with his people. But, like, in modern day, you don't see that shit. You don't see the actual war leaders staying with their people, you know. You know, there were, I think it was the UN or another country offered to get him a, a flight out of there. And he said, no, I'm not looking for a ride. I'm going to stay here with my people and fight. And that's exactly what he did. And and it also adds to the reputation because a lot of people in the entertainment industry get a bad reputation in politics. And by a bad reputation, I mean from Republicans of that, you know, people in our industry aren't allowed to have a say in politics because because we work in the arts, um, which apparently doesn't make us real Americans. There's, I don't even know what that is supposed to imply, that working in the arts doesn't give you a say in politics, even though the arts a lot of time reflect the political world. But what I'm saying is, Zelensky used to be an actor. Uh, he, and he straight up played the Ukrainian pre president in a show and the fact that he now is president and is actually you know doing basically being one of the best world leaders that i've ever seen in history at least in my life you know it's like i don't know to me it feels like a big fuck you to people who are like people in the entertainment industry shouldn't have a say go back to your go back to your fucking trailer i don't know I don't know what those people say. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I, I don't even want to try to get in that mindset of those people because it baffles me so much that people think like that. Um, but anyways, I have a lot of respect for him as somebody who, uh, in a way, works in the entertainment industry and is aspiring to build a career in the entertainment industry, as well as you know, just in general, you know, I have a lot of fucking respect for him. He's a great man and he's a great leader. Uh, but anyways, he's basically made Putin his bitch, but also, you know, all the other countries that are helping them out and sanctioning Russia. It's just, it's beautiful to see because like in history, you hear about like all the times that like, like in World War II and then like, uh, I think it was the Mongols. They like times that other countries and other um, nations and uh, whatnot have uh, tried to invade Russia and take over, and they failed because of the the cold and like the Russians are strong, whatever. And then for Ukraine to be a little like fuck you, it's nice. It's very nice, and they had it coming to them. And they have far worse coming to them for how awful they are and how just homophobic and racist and ugh, just they're just and i'm not talking about the russian people as a whole i'm mostly talking about the government and by mostly i mean i am talking about the government and about putin um because i know there are protests going on in, in russia and and i know a lot of a large portion uh of the Russian population is against it. Uh, and I respect that. I'm talking about the government. Mm. 
Anyways, that's enough of that rant. But that being said, there will be links in the description of the episode uh, for how you can help uh, support Ukraine uh, in various ways. Um, yeah, but anyways, let's get into it. So, starting off with Netflix on March 1st, we have Netflix series, Guardians of Justice, Netflix documentary, The Worst Roommate Ever, uh, 21, 21 Bridges, uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street from 2010, and A Nightmare on Elm Street from 1984. I'm excited about the original because I've always wanted to watch that and I've not been able to find it. So the fact that it will be on Netflix now piques my interest. Uh, I don't watch remakes. I'll say that much. I mean, I have in the past, obviously, but especially with horror, I actively, a lot of times I actively avoid avoid remakes. The only one that I've seen that I like, I'd enjoy is uh, It. And only the first one, not even It Chapter 2. I don't really care for It Chapter 2. But anyways. Uh, also, Battleship, starring Rihanna. Uh, Christine, Coach Carter, Due Date, Freddy vs. Jason. I have memories attached to that from when my brother used to terrorize me with horror films. And now I enjoy horror films. So fuck you t to my brother for that. Also, fuck you to my brother for all the interruptions he did uh, during that one episode a few weeks ago. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Shout out to anyone who actually listened to that and heard me get very upset. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Gattaca, The Gift, The Grey Mile, My Best Friend's Wedding, Public Enemies, Redemption, The Replacements, Richie Rich, the Shawshank Redemption. Speaking of the replacements, I know this the movie, the replacements, is completely different from the show, but that I'm gonna make a note to look it up on Disney Plus after I finish recording. Cause I loved I I loved the replacements as a kid. The show on Disney. So like I wanna know. I said I was gonna look it up afterwards. And I'm, I'm looking it up right now, actually. I lied. But it is on Disney Plus. I'm probably not going to watch it because I hardly go on Disney Plus. But the fact that I know it's on there now makes me happy. Continuing, uh, Shooter, Shrek, Shrek Two. Sorry to bother you. Uh, Starship Troopers. Also, I I would like to apologize to Boots Riley. Um, it's you're not the reason that <laughs> the film Sorry to Bother You has nothing to do with why the drunk commentaries were discontinued. Nothing. I just. Yeah, that was supposed to be the movie for the commentary, and then things happened, and I decided it was best for me and my schedule if I discontinued them. But uh, in the future, I will for sure at least do a review of it because I do own it, so I can at least do one of my personal collection reviews on it because that's basic. That's what replaced uh, drunk commentaries is personal. I don't have like an actual title for that series of the podcast because you know stroke commentaries monthly reviews called to the month stream wars i don't have one for now i'm just calling them like personal reviews if you have a better title than that let me know but continue on sorry to bother you it's a good movie but anyways starship troopers texas chainsaw 3d top gun v for vendetta where the wild things are big recommend i'm a huge i'm a huge spike jones stan anyways big recommend um and zoolander on March 2nd, Netflix film Against the Ice, Netflix filmed, filmed, Netflix film The Pirates, The Last Royal Treasure, and Netflix series Savage Rhythm. March 3rd, Netflix family He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, season two, Netflix series Midnight at the Parapolis, uh, Netflix series The Parisian Agency Exclusive Properties, season two, Power Rangers Dino Fury, season two, Netflix documentary Surviving Paradise, A Family Tale, Netflix film The Weekend Away, and Netflix comedy Winderson Nunes, My Own Show, March 4th, Netflix film The Invisible Thread, Netflix series Lies and Deceit, Netflix series Making Fun, Netflix film Mesquina, and Netflix series Pieces of Her. On March 5th, Beirut. On March 7th, season 4 of Good Girls. On March 8th, Netflix series An Astrological Guide for Broken Hearts, season 2. 
Netflix film Autumn Girl, Netflix Family Chip and Potato Season 3, Netflix series Last One Standing, and Netflix comedy, Netflix comedy, I don't know why I almost said Nate. It says Taylor. I almost said Nate. Anyways, Netflix comedy, Taylor Tom, Tomlinson, Look at You. Don't ask why I almost said Nate. I actually have no clue. I don't know if I just saw the beginning of Taylor and like I saw the word Netflix and the beginning of the word Taylor and just went Nate. I don't know. March 9th, Netflix documentary, The Andy Warhol Diaries, Netflix film, The, Bo the Bombardment, Netflix series, Byron Baez, or is it called Byron Bays? It's either Byron Bays or Byron Baez. I don't know. Uh, Netflix series, Queer Eye Germany, Netflix series, The Last Kingdom, season five, on March 10th. DC's Legends of Tomorrow Season 7, Netflix Family Karma's World Season 2, Netflix Anime Kotaro Lives Alone, and Netflix Series Love Life and Everything in Between. March 11th, Netflix Series Formula One Drive to Survive Season 4, Netflix Series Life After Death with, 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 Life After death with Tyler Henry. I'm struggling with T names. Anyways, Netflix Series Once Upon a Time Happily Never After. I wonder if that's related to the old Happily Never After, or if it's just related to Once Upon a Time, which I doubt it would be related to Once Upon a Time because that's a Disney property. I don't know. It, it, Once Upon a Time is on Disney Plus. It used to be on Netflix, but that was before Disney Plus. Anyways, also, Netflix film, The Adam Project. March 12th, uh, Dunkirk. March 13th, London Has Fallen, March 15th, Netflix anime, Adam by Eve, a, a, a live-in animation, uh, Netflix comedy, Catherine Cohen, The Twist, She's Gorgeous, Netflix film, Marilyn's Eyes, uh, One Piece film, Strong World, Netflix family, Team, Zenko, Go. March 16th, Netflix series, Pedal to Metal, um, Netflix documentary, Bad Vegan, Fame, Fraud, Fugitives. Netflix documentary, Heist, The Great, Ro Ro the Great Robbery of Brazil's Central Bank. And A Walk Among Tombstones. March 17th, Lee Daniels, The Butler. Netflix film, Rescue, Res <laughs> Rescue by Ruby. And Netflix series, Soil. March 18th, Netflix series, Alessandro Catalan. One Simple Question, Netflix Documentary, Animal Season 2, Netflix Film, Black Crab, Netflix Series, Krakow Monsters, Netflix Series, Eternally Confused and Eager for Love, Netflix Series, Human Resources, Netflix Series, Is It Cake? I should have known it was either going to be Netflix or like Food Network or TLC that made a show about the Is It Cake trend and i'm annoyed i like i should have known it was coming but i'm still annoyed <sighs> i hate that trend. it's like it wasn't it was funny for like a day now it's not anymore anyways netflix series light the night part two uh netflix series standing up uh thomas and friends race for the sodor cup netflix series top boy season two Netflix film Windfall, Netflix Netflix film Without Saying Goodbye, and Netflix series Young, Famous, and African. March 21st, Call the Midwife se se series, it's a British show, series 10, in the UK series, is what they say, in place of season. I just, I was, I'm so used to saying season that it threw me off. Anyways, also on... March 21st, Netflix film In Good Hands. On March 22nd, Netflix comedy Jeff Jeff Foxworthy, The Good Old Days. And Netflix documentary The Principles of Pleasure. March 24th, Netflix film Love Like the Falling Petals. March 25th, Netflix series Bridgerton Season 2. Very excited for that. I need to read the next book in the series. I keep forgetting. I only read The Duke and I need to read the next one. Uh, anyways, Netflix Family, Transformers, Bot Bots. March 26th, uh, Blade Runner 2049, 
and King of Thieves on March 28th, The Imitation Game, March 29th, uh, Netflix anime, Thermae, Romae, Thermae, Romae, Novae. I'm taking Latin, so that's how you pronounce an A-E. In a word, it's Thermae, it's I. It's like I, I, not like I, like the letter. It's got like a I, Thermae, Romae, Novae, not A. It's like, you know, that guy's kind of like I. Like you're saying A and E, but it comes out sounding like an I in a way, like I, Thermae. Anyways, not like Thermae or Romae, not that. Anyways. <sighs> Netflix Family Mighty Express Season 6, Netflix Comedy Mike Epps, Indiana Mike. Looking forward to that. Uh, right. I'm hoping. I'm remembering correctly. Yes, yes, okay. I am remembering correctly. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, March 30th, Netflix film All Hail and Netflix documentary Trust No One, The Hunt for the Crypto King. March 31st, Casual Seasons 1 through 4. I don't know why I'm excited about that. That's been on Hulu for years, in case you're wondering. Casual is a pretty good show. Um, one of the seasons has uh, Renzi Feliz in it, who is uh, played Alex Wilder in uh, Marvel's Runaways on Hulu and um, also voiced uh, Camilo in Encanto. He's in, I don't know if he's in a season of it. I think he is just in like season three or something. I don't know. But overall, Casual is a good show. It's been on Hulu for a long time. So, I don't, I don't know. To me, it's not news that it's joining Netflix. I guess Netflix is slightly more accessible than Hulu because it doesn't have ads. And I know ads are are, um, are like a breaking point for people now. I mean, they are for me too. It's wild. It's wild. I feel like it was just like 10 years ago that we were still watching commercials all the time. And I mean, some people still do. My parents refuse to use streaming services, even though... They have a smart TV and they know how to use those features. They refuse to and they still pay way too much for Dish. Anyways, but also on March 31st, Netflix family, Super Pups. Um, these are other things joining Netflix in March, but they are TBA to be announced. Netflix documentary, 800 meters and Netflix series tomorrow. Moving on to HBO Max. Really? You've been loaded this whole time and you, and you chose to refresh out of nowhere. This is Decider. I like Decider. Uh, it's the one that I use to get these lists. I get these lists from Decider. But like, I don't know. They they take a, lot, a long time to load because they have so many ads and so many little links. Like, their user interface is kind of messy. I'm not going to lie. It's It's like... It's like they redesigned their website when BuzzFeed was popular and just never changed it because it gives their it gives BuzzFeed vibes and uh, it's messy. It, it's got too much going on, too much to look at. Just keep it straightforward to the point. We don't need all these extra links. The ads, I understand every website has ads, but all these links, it's just unnecessary. It's unnecessary. But anyways, because of that, it, it keeps making everything refresh and it takes a while to load oh my god fucking greg abbott ad on my screen how do i get rid of it i can't i <sighs> decider i know this is not your fault this is the algorithm's fault oh it reloaded okay <laughs> it changed to an h&r block ad i'm okay with that i already filed my taxes but thank you h&r block for saving me from that rant about why greg abbott is a piece of shit please vote him out this year please if you live in texas please vote him out I will be voting against him. He's not fit to rule. Okay. Anyways, on HBO Max, on March 1st, uh, joining is, or I guess being added on March 1st, is The Aviator Adaptation. Oh, I'm looking for, that's, that's actually been on my list. That's the only Spike Jones like, directed, that's the only film directed by Spike Jones that I haven't seen. So, Adaptation. Adaptation. I gotta remember to put that on my list when it gets added. 
um, because it's still February when I'm recording, but I gotta remember that adaptation. Anyways, all the pretty horses, are we done yet? Uh, only, only the sequel, not the, not are we there yet, just are we done yet? Anyways, this happens a lot. I don't know why I still question when only a sequel gets added. Unless are we there yet is already on HBO Max. No more sidetracking. I, I'm not even going to look it up. No, I'm not letting myself get distracted again. We are staying on topic. Because clearly my five ants isn't working. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, around the World in 80 Days. Um, blow Up of Blow Up. Which is a documentary, I think, about the movie Blow Up. Uh, Boys in the Hood. Uh, camera Person. Diner. Fire Boys. Fly Away Home. Gigi. Uh, Los Chrono Crimenes, uh, Mogul Mowgli, I'm, I need to add that to my list if I want to watch that, uh, One Tree Hill, Resident Evil, Resident Evil Afterlife, Resident Evil Apocalypse, Resident Evil Damnation, Resident Evil Extinction, Resident Evil Retribution, uh, Starship, Starship Troopers 2, Hero of the Federation, Starship, Starship Troopers, uh, Starsky and Hutch from 1975, the original, not the remake with Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson. Uh, Larry David Story, or The Larry David Story, Part 1, American Jew Boy documentary premiere. Uh, Larry David, the, the, I keep forgetting to say the, The Larry David Story, Part 2, The Jewish Fountainhead documentary premiere. Both are premiering on the same day. Both parts. I don't know why it was in two parts unless it's just that long. Uh, the Two Mrs. Carols, uh, The World of Jacques Demi, uh, The Young Girls Turn 25, Urban Legend, and Welcome Back. Uh, March 2nd, Blade 1. Why is it called Blade 1? It's just Blade. Also, it was on HBO Max last year. Which is another thing. I need to stop fucking questioning HBO Max's revolving door. I've... It's, been a regular thing that I get mad about every month. I need to stop that because I know what happens. I know it happens. I gotta stop being mad about it. Just gotta stop. Anyways, on March 2nd, being added to HBO Max, Ryosuke Hamaguji's Drive My Car. It's finally, it's finally like available to the masses, or it finally will be available to the masses. So go fucking watch that movie. No excuses because now it's on HBO Max. Or it's going to be on HBO Max now. No excuses. Anyways, uh, Food Wars, Shokuge, Shokugeki no Soma, season five, uh, and uh, Steven Spielberg's West Side Story remake. Uh, which, congratulations to Ariana DeBose for making history, for making queer history. We love you at the SAG Awards. Uh, March 3rd, uh, Max Original Season 1 premiere, Gaming Wall Street. Max Original Season 2 premiere of Little Ellen Gross. Gross. I, I don't know. Ellen DeGeneres making, I guess, her own version of Little Bill. It's not original, but also part of me feels like I should have seen that coming. You know, it's not original because, you know, Bill Cosby did it. But, you know, pieces of shit in Hollywood producing animated children's shows where the main character is a child version of them is kind of icky, you know, in hindsight. I liked Little Bill as a kid, but as an adult looking back at it, I'm like, that's kind of weird. That's just kind of weird that Bill Cosby was like, I'm going to make a show where the main character is me as a kid. Because I, I, if I can recall, it's not like everyone hates Chris, where it's like semi-autobiographical. Because everyone hates Chris, That's it's semi-autobiographical, so it's different. But... From what I know about Little Ellen and Little Bill, that's not the case. So it's kind of icky if you think about it. Because, you know, Bill Cosby is a rapist and then Ellen DeGeneres is, you know, 
a horrible person as well. Anyways, uh, also March 3rd, Max Original Season 1 premiere of Our Flag Means Death, and Max Original Season 1 premiere of The Tourist. On March 4th, I'm excited about this, I didn't know it was getting added to HBO Max, uh, El Planeta from last year, uh, that is distributed by Utopia, who also distributed Shiva Baby. Very, very much looking forward to it. Utopia is also going to be uh, distributing uh, Jane by Charlotte um, and uh, and uh, Vortex this year. So I'm very excited about that. Vortex is the upcoming uh, Gaspar Noé film. And Jane by Charlotte is uh, Charlotte Gainsbourg's uh, directorial debut, which is a documentary feature of her, I guess, interviewing slash spending time with her mother, who is, her mother is literally Jane Birkin. Uh, so, I'm very much looking forward to those later this year. We're not going to talk about the other big director, we're not going to talk about the other directorial debut that they are going to be distributing. We don't put that person's name in our mouth, they are a piece of shit, they are a child molester, they are a turf. We don't talk about them. Do not talk about that person. Keep their name out of your mouth. Not worth our time. Not worth our time. I will attribute to that. I, I'm going, I'm only attributing that film being Baba Utopia to um, nepotism because uh, the person whose name I will not say is a product of, nepo their career is a product of nepotism, which there's nothing wrong with that. But that's the reason that they still have a career because their family has money and power in Hollywood. Uh, and um, to my knowledge, I'm sure that their family is friends with the Coppolas and or the Schwartzmans. And Utopia is owned, founded, operated uh, by Robert Schwartzman. So, yeah. Who is Jason Schwartzman's brother? And they are both Nicolas Cage's cousin, cousins. And all three of them are uh, cousins of like the Coppola children, Sophia and Gia and Roman and Roman? Is it Roman or Ronan? I think it's Roman. But anyways, the Coppola family. I love the Coppola family, I'm not gonna lie. They are probably my favorite like familial dynasty in Hollywood. Um, they're great. They're fantastic people, you know? Like, what Robert Schwartzman is doing with Utopia is incredible, and I respect it, and I, I love it. Uh, but, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, him choosing to distribute that film, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna ignore it. Because I do not have parasocial relationships with companies or celebrities. So I'm just going to choose to ignore it, and I'm probably not going to watch it. Anyways. Let me stop going on rants, but that person deserves that fucking rant. Anyways, El Planeta is going to be added on March 4th, and I'm excited about that because I've been wanting to watch it. Uh, also, oh, 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 one more thing, though. I will say, uh, if you look into Utopia uh, and look at their catalog, uh, they have a lot of interesting indie films. Literally, they're, they're, the company is built on uh, giving back to the filmmakers and making sure that they get their due from the film that they made. So Robert Schwartzman also created, founded a streaming service called AltaVod. Um, and that is basically where you can buy or rent uh, any of the Utopia films. Um, and I believe... Altavod is connected to iTunes, so you can also buy or rent those films on iTunes. So they're available on iTunes or Altavod. I would suggest Altavod just to support the company. Um, but yeah, I, I have a lot of respect for him doing that because that's somebody who's using their power and their wealth for good, knowing that they come from a family of power, like a very famous family in Hollywood. I respect that. But anyways, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to tell y'all know it's Altavod. The purpose of Altavod is to make sure that proceeds go to the filmmakers. Because that, that is a big problem with independent filmmakers. They usually a lot of times don't make their money back. 
once they get distributed, the company that bought the distribution rights is just like, yeah, we'll pay you, but like, fuck you. This way they actually get proceeds and residuals. Anyways, it guarantees. But continuing, also on March 4th, F9, the Fast Saga from last year, and uh, Goyo and Lentra, or in Letra, there's no N, Letra de Otro. Uh, that is a 2022 release. March 6th, uh, series premiere of Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty. March 7th, Teen Titans Go, Season 7, A premiere. Uh, March 8th, Max Original Season 1 premiere of Rux. And Whose Line Is It Anyway, Seasons 1 through 8. March 10th, uh, Dune from 2021. Uh, Max Original Season 1 premiere of Wanpa and Chef. Max Original Season 1 premiere of Sandy and Chef. And Max Original Season 1 premiere of Theodosia. Uh, March 12th, Victor and, Sa Victor and Valentino Season 3A premiere. Uh, March 13th, uh, Season 1 premiere of Game Theory with Bomani Bo Jones. March 14th, Season 1 of Blade Runner Black Locust. I almost said Locust. Black Lotus, not Locust. That's Lotus is a flower. Locust is a bug. Uh, March 15th, documentary premiere of Phoenix Rising Parts 1 and 2. March 17th, Max Original Season 1 premiere of DMZ. Max Original Season 2 premiere of Jellystone. And Max Original Season 1 premiere of Minx. On March 18th, Halloween Kills, extended version. Uh, Max Original Season 1 premiere of Lust. Uh, Max original premiere of On My Way with Arena Rhymes, uh, premiere of Pseudo and Flat and Nikki. March 20th, Max original season one premiere of Amsterdam. March 22nd, uh, Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel premiere. March 23rd, uh, Fists of Freedom, the, th the story of the 68 Summer Games. March 24th, King Richard from 2021. Uh, Max original season one premiere of One Perfect Shot. I'm looking for. I if, I hope that's got something to do with like the concept of one perfect shot and not something else because if that's the case then I'm looking forward to that because I like the concept of the one perfect shot basically the concept of the one perfect shot is being like it's a still from a movie that you think is just the most beautiful shot in the whole movie basically so show about that would be interesting to me also, March 24th, Max Original Season 1 premiere of Queen Stars, Max Original Season 2 premiere of Starstruck, and Max Original Season 1 premiere of Traffickers Inside the Golden Triangle. March 25th, Degrassi The Next Generation. Oh, fuck yeah. Just. That's the. That's. The Next Generation is the one with Drake. I.e., that's the good one. Not because Drake is in it, but just in general. That's the best Degrassi series. Not specifically because of Drake, just overall. It's the best one. Anyways, also March 25th, uh, Cartoonito. Cartoonito, original season one premiere. What is Cartoonito? Is that like a sub thing of HBO Max now? Uh, but anyways, it's called Lucas the Spider. I think Lucas the Spider is already like a, a YouTube thing. So I think them making it a show is like uh, the annoying orange getting a show on Cartoon Network. Anyways, March 31st, uh, Max Original Season 1 premiere of Brené Brown, Atlas of the Heart, Max Original Season 1 premiere of Julia, and Moonshot from 2022. Not to be confused with Moonfall from 2022. Moonshot. I do not know what Moonshot is about, to be honest. I know what Moonfall is about, and I've heard it's not good, but I don't know, Moonshot. Uh, moving on to Hulu, actually. Uh, let me text the people I'm meeting with because I'm definitely going to be late. Uh, going to be a bit late. Uh, 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 okay, sorry. I was going to like keep talking while I was typing that, but then I realized if I tried to talk while I was typing, I would just confuse myself and forget what, what I was doing. Moving on to Hulu on March 1st, uh, Better Things Season 5 premiere, Rich Man, Poor Woman, 
complete season one, two days in the valley, uh, eight mm. I don't know if that's supposed to be like eight millimeters or what, or if it's just called eight mm. But yeah, uh, a Medea Christmas, another Earth, Baby Mama, the Banger Sisters, Beaches, Behind Enemy Lines, Benny and June, the Big Scary S Word, uh, Blue Chips, Blue Velvet, fuck yeah, uh, Bringing Down the House, Brothers. Can't Buy Me Love, Casualties of War, Center Stage, Charlie Wilson's War, The Choice, Crash, from 2005, Crash, uh, Dance Flick, Dangerous Beauty, Deficit, Demolition Man, The Descendants, from 2011, not The Disney Descendants, uh, Deuce is Wild, Devil in a Blue Dress, Disaster Movie, uh, Downhill Racer, Drinking Buddies, The Edge, Edward Scissorhands, Evan Almighty, Feel the Noise, The Firm, Flatliners from 1990, the original. Uh, Forever My Girl, Freedom Land, Fright Night from 1985, also the original. Uh, G, Garden State, Ghoulies, The Gift from 2000. Uh, uh, Geekly, or Geekly, Geekly. I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. I've never heard it pronounced before but i forgot how it's pronounced uh glory the golden child the greatest story ever told green zone guarding tess guess who gunfight at the okay coral hardball heaven can wait here comes the boom the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy the insider juno kiss the girls la confidential land of the dead the last waltz oh, fuck yeah uh lawless life aquatic with steve zissou fuck yeah uh, Look Who's Talking, Marching Call, The Meddler, Moby Doc, My Super Ex-Girlfriend, My Super Ex-Girlfriend, I don't know why I, like, added the D, like, a second after I finished the word, uh, The Omen from 1976, uh, Peggy Sue Got Married, People Like Us, The Perfect Holiday, Platoon Leader, Predators, The Princess Bride, The Raid 2, Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion, Roxanne, The Royal Tenenbaums, fuck yeah. Sahara, The Saint, Savior for Sale, Scotty and the Secret History of Hollywood, Sense and Sensibility, Shanghai Noon, Shine Like, Shine, Shine Like, Shine a Light. This is also upcoming. This is a, is, I'm pretty sure this is a Utopia film, Sh in Champagne from 2020. I'm pretty sure that's Utopia. It is. It is Utopia. Okay. I, I wasn't sure if it was Utopia or Neon because Hulu has a streaming deal with Neon, but I'm pretty sure Shit in Champagne is Utopia. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, show me the picture. Single white female. Space Invaders. The Square. St. Elmo's Fire. Starship Troopers. The Taylor of Panama. The Talented Miss Ripley. The Terminal. Tim Burton's Corpse Bride. To Catch a Thief. Transcendence. Trapped. Unstoppable. Vertical Limit. The Virgin Suicides. Speaking of the Coppola's. Uh, the Women and... Oh, and The Woman in Black from 2002. Because I'm pretty sure The Woman in Black... There was another film called The Woman in Black with Daniel Radcliffe, if I'm correct. Uh, March 3rd, uh, the Dropout 3 episode limited series premiere, Before Midnight, Oculus, Before Midnight and Oculus, sorry. Uh, March 4th, Fresh from 2022, that is starring Sebastian Stan. I don't know, I have mixed feelings on Sebastian Stan as a person, but he is a good actor. Uh, Dick Town. Season 2 premiere, literally, Dick Town. Uh, Benedetta from 2021. I watched that movie. Recommend it. It's good. The, the sound mixing in it is crystal clear. I'll say that much. Uh, and Lantern's Lane from 2021. On March 5th, Stronger. March 6th, uh, Mark Mary and Some Other People in 2021. March 8th, India, Sweets and Spices from 2021. March 9th, The Thing About Pam series premiere. Uh, March 10th, The Masked Singer season 7 premiere. Domino Master series premiere. Good Trouble season 4A premiere. And American Refugee from 2021. March 12th, Multiverse from 2022. Uh, March 14th, Claws complete season 4. And Hell Hath No Fury from 2021. March 15th, All Good Things, Nature Calls, and You Can't Kill Meme from 2021. That is also a Utopia film. It is called You Can't Kill Meme, like memes. Uh, March 16th, Young Rock, season two premiere. 
uh, Mr. Mayor, season two premiere, and Step. March 17th, Bad Luck Bang, or Looney Porn, from 2021. March 18th, uh, Life and Beth, complete season one premiere. I doubt that's related to Life After Beth. I would have, I feel like I would have heard about that. It's also A24 film, so A24 would have been like, hey, so I'm pretty sure it's unrelated. Anyways, Deep Water 2022. Uh, Master Chef Junior season 8 premiere. Welcome to Flatch series premiere. Keeping up the Kardashians complete season 20. Uh, March 19th, Captains of Zatari. That's also a utopia film. Uh, I Know Who Killed Me and My Little Pony uh, 2017. Um, March 22nd, um, American Song Contest series premiere. March 23rd, Bloods, Season 2A, Summer Days, Summer Nights from 2021, and Wrath of Man from 2021. March 25th, Atlanta, Season 3 premiere. <gasps> they did it. They brought it back. Finally. Atlanta is finally back. Oh, my God. Anyways, <laughs> also on March 25th, American Siege from 2022. March 26th, Mass from 2021. Highly fucking recommend a great movie. Fantastic movie. On March 28th, the Oscars. Not looking forward to them. No, I'm only not looking forward to them because they changed the structure of the show and are basically turning it into the Teen Choice Awards. And I'm not happy about that because it feels like a big, that just feels disrespectful to film. Um, but also on March 28th, Monsters and Men from 2018. March 29th, The Girl from Plainville, three-episode limited series premiere. Oh, it's only three episodes? Shit. Uh, Jackass Presents Bad Grandpa, uh, and Jackass Presents Bad Grandpa Extended Cut. Uh, March 30th, Name That Tune, season two premiere, and Killing Them Softly. And on March 31st, First Day, season complete season two, and Kaguya-sama, Kaguya Love is War, complete season one. Thank you, fucking decider. That the website was already loaded. I don't know why you got reloaded again. <sighs> on Disney Plus, on March 2nd, nothing on March 1st, but on March 2nd, uh, Brain Games, On the Road, Season 1, Broken Karaoke, Season 1, uh, Mickey Mouse Funhouse, Season 1, and West Side Story. Does not have a year, but uh, doesn't have a year. Doesn't say which one. So, well, we, we shall see which one. I mean, we know for sure that the remake is going to be on HBO Max, but we don't know that, you know, maybe it's getting on HBO Max and Disney Plus. Or maybe on Disney Plus is just the original. I don't know, but we shall see because it doesn't say. Uh, March 4th, Russia's Wild Tiger. March 9th, Weekend Family Season 1. March 11th, Turning Red. Looking forward to that movie. I'm very... I'm very much looking forward to that movie. It looks really good. Uh, and Embrace the Panda, Making Turning Red. March 16th, Big City Green, Season 3. Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, Season 4. Muppet Babies, Season 3. Spidey and His Amazing Friends, Season 1. March 18th, Step, Cheaper by the Dozen. I believe that is the, the reboot with uh, Zach Braff. Uh, and More Than Robots. March 23rd, uh, Doc McStuffins Shorts season one, The Doc Files season one, and Parallels on March 25th, Olivia Rodrigo driving home to you, and The Wonderful Spring of Mickey Mouse, March 30th, E Cavalieri di Castel Corvo season one, and Moon Knight. I'm excited for Moon Knight. I love Oscar Isaac. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Anyways, moving on to Amazon Prime Video on March 1st, uh, The Hunter Foot Journey, The Proposal, Weekend at Bernie's, Prometheus, Chronicle, Confessions of a Shopaholic, Flight Plan, The Tooth Fairy, Dead Poet Society, Lawless, Crash, 2005, uh, Dirty Dancing 2, Havana Nights, Blackfish, Prince Avalanche, Coffee, uh, Blackula, Spaceballs, Be Cool, Scream, Blackula, Scream, Foxy Brown, Baby Sheba, uh, Cotton Comes to Harlem, Liar Liar, Puss in Boots, and Takers on March 4th, uh, Lucy and Desi from 2022, 
uh, the Boys Presents Diabolical 20, from 2022, Season 1. Uh, Upload from 2022, Season 2. Uh, March 5th, Pete the Cat, Season 2, Part 4. March 10th, Harina from 2022. March 25th, Lizzo's Watch Out for the Big Girls, Season 1. I think all of those from March 4th and, and after our originals. I don't know, it doesn't fully indicate it. Whoever wrote this article did not do a good job. It's not even organized that well, to be honest. It's not organized the way that it normally is. It was kind of confusing. But, uh, I mean, thankfully to me, that one actually had the years of the of the things, so it, I knew. Basically, it was like one big paragraph of names. So it wasn't, normally it's like a straight up list, but this was just a big paragraph. Um, and if, it, if the years hadn't been on there, I would have been confused. You know, and I don't, I don't know, normally Decider puts the years on everything, but never on Disney Plus. They never put the years on the Disney Plus stuff. I don't know why, and I don't like it. But it's only the Disney Plus list that doesn't have years. All the other Decider lists have years. Anyways. Continuing on to theatrical releases in March. I'm sorry that I'm like rushing now, but like I'm trying to get <laughs> trying to get through this. I'm just trying to get through this. Because I realized I spent too long rambling. But anyways, in theatrical releases in March, on March 4th, uh, we have the nationwide release of uh of Matt Reeves' The Batman. Very much looking forward to that. I will be seeing that on opening weekend. Um, limited releases on March 4th. For limited releases, we have Mother Schmuckers, uh, Asking For It, Night Ride, The Changed, After Yang. Fucking, I, go watch After Yang. Go fucking watch After Yang. That is one of the best films I've seen so far this year. Go watch After Yang if it's playing in your city. And then when it does get a work, wide release if it didn't play in your city before when it gets a more wide release watch it anyways uh and hudo salon and great freedom uh on march 10th there's a limited release of the hyperions uh march 11th nationwide release of tyson's run i don't know why my mind thought of logan's run I'm, i highly doubt that those are related i just i see name run and i'm like ugh Please don't be related to Logan's Run. Leave. Let Logan's Run continue to be its own thing. If Logan's Run ever got remade, I would scream. I would rip my head off. Anyways, but uh, limited releases on March 11th are Off Season, The Exorcism of God, uh, Gold, Fear, Ash and Dust, I Am Here, Ultrasound. No, not Ultrasound. That's VOD. But anyways, Ultrasound will be out on VOD. I don't know, do y'all want me to say that since I'm, I like, would y'all like me to say the things that are joining VODs in digital? That's, it's a lot though. That's a lot. That's a lot of movies. I don't know. So let me know. Uh, but also a limited release on March 11th is Moon Manor. Um, on March 18th, the nationwide releases are The Unbreakable Boy, Uma, and The Outfit. The limited releases on March 18th are Ahead Skneen, uh, Alice X, looking forward to X, um, Intrigald, Tethered, Expired, Tollbooth, Panama, The Hater, uh, Jane by Charlotte, uh, that's an extremely limited because it's only playing in New York, but Jane by Charlotte, uh, The Torch, and Mao. Um, on March 25th, nationwide release of The Lost City. 100% not looking forward to that movie now that I... A couple weeks ago, Brad... Hashtag invite Brad, even though he hasn't been on in so long. I miss you, Brad. Not like I don't talk to him every week. <laughs> but anyways, a few weeks ago, on the Nerdcore live show, we read that article, that Variety article about Channing Tatum's uh, comeback to film. And 
uh, we learned kind of what the lost city was about and what the original name of it was and now i just don't look for it I'm, i just don't care for it anymore uh, not that i cared for it before but i just don't care for it at all now anyways limited releases on march 25th are the duke infinite storm stunt rock you are not my mother immortal soul mothering sunday and then the los angeles release of jam by charlotte so i'm guessing those are just premieres then uh yeah and then on march 30th uh the limited release of Neatrum. and to finish off with the criterion collection woo 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 we have five films joining the criterion collection this month the first one on march 8th is with spine number 1115 who is texting me okay um marta messaro's adoption from hungary 1975 86 minutes black and white uh trailblazing auteur marta messaro's gives aching expression to the experiences of women in 1970s Hungary in the sensitive and absorbing drama, which became the first film directed by a woman to win the Golden Bear at the Berlin Film Festival. Through intimate camera work, adoption immerses the viewer in the worlds of two women, each searching for, for fulfillment. Kata and a middle-aged, no, and Kata, a middle-aged factory worker who wants to have a child with her married lover, and Anna, a teenage ward of the state determined to emancipate herself in order to marry her boyfriend. The bond that forms between the two speaks quietly but powerfully to the social and political forces that shape women's lives as each navigates the realities of love, marriage, and motherhood in her quest for self-determination. On March 15th, with spy number 218. What the fuck? Unless it's the... Um, I don't actually know. This might be a just. No, it's not. It's not because you know they're re-releasing some as 4K, but this isn't. I already went on this rant last month about how I don't understand how their numbering works. But anyways, uh, find number 218, like 218, is Jean-Pierre Melville's uh, Les Cercles Rouges uh, from France, 1970, 140 minutes in color. Elaine Delon plays a master thief fresh out of prison who crosses paths with a notorious escapee and an alcoholic ex-cop. The unlikely trio plot a heist against impossible odds until a relentless inspector and their own pasts seal their fates. With its honorable anti-heroes, coolly atmospheric cinematography, and breathtaking set pieces, Le Cercle Rouge is the quintessential film by Jean-Pierre Melville, the master of ambiguous introspective crime cinema. I think that's the shortest description I've ever seen on Criterion's website. So, joining the Criterion Collection on March 22nd with spine number 1116 is Robert Eldridge's The Flight of the Phoenix. It's the United States, 1965, 142 minutes in color. Um, a downed airplane is a motley group of men's only protection from the relentless desert sun in this psychologically charged disaster epic. One of the all-time great survival movies, James Stewart is the veteran pilot whose Benghazi-bound plane carrying passengers played by an unshaven ensemble of screen icons including Richard Attenborough, Ernest Borgnine, Ian Bannon, Dan Jarier, Peter Finch, and George Kennedy crash lands in the remote Sahara. As tensions simmer among the survivors, they find themselves forced to trust a coldly logical engineer whose plan is to get them, who plans whose plan to get them out may just be crazy enough to work or could kill them all. Directed with characteristic punch by Hollywood iconoclast Robert Eldridge, The Flight of the Phoenix balances adventure with human drama as it conducts a surprising and complex examination of authority, honor, and camaraderie among desperate men. I just found out, I just found out that camaraderie is spelled differently than I thought it was. I hate my life. Not that I've ever actually had to write that word down, but I just thought it was spelled differently. So, joining the Criterion Collection on March 29th with spine number 1118 is Martin Scorsese's The Last Waltz, United States, 1978, 117 minutes, color. 
More than just one of the greatest concert films ever made, The Last Waltz is an at once ecstatic and elegaic summation of, the, of a vital era in American rock music. Invited to capture the farewell performance of the legendary group The Band at San Francisco's Winterland Ballroom on Thanksgiving 1976, Martin Scorsese conceived a new kind of music documentary. Enlisting seven camera operators and production designer Boris Levin to design the strikingly theatrical sets, Scorsese created a grandly immersive experience that brings viewers on stage and inside the music itself. That music, as performed by the band and a host of other generation-defining artists, including Bob Dylan, Joni Mitchell, Queen, Van Morrison, the Staple Sisters, the Staple Sisters, the Staple Singers, Muddy Waters, and Neil Young, lives on as an almost religious expression of the transcendent possibilities of rock and roll. I did not know that Martin Scorsese, like, revolutionized the concert film. That just makes me love it more. Fucking icon. Also joining on March 29th with spine number 1117 is Theodore Witcher's Love Jones from United States 1997, 109 minutes in color. Steeped in the bohemian cool of Chicago's 1990s black creative scene, Love Jones, the smart, sexy, and stylish debut feature of writer-director Theodore Witcher, is a love story for anyone who has ever wondered, how do I know when I found the one? Lorenz Tate and Nia Long have magnetism and chemistry to burn as the striving, artistically talented 20-somethings. He's a poet, she's a photographer, who sparked their over their love of literature and jazz, but whose mutual reluctance to commit to a relationship leaves them both navigating an emotional minefield of confusion, jealousy, and regrets. Velvety cinematography, an unforgettable, eclectic soundtrack, dazzling dialogue, and refreshing, refreshingly low-key naturalistic performances by an ensemble cast that also includes Isaiah Washington, Lisa Nicole Carson, Bill Bellamy, Bernadette Speaks, and Leonard Roberts come together in an intoxicating, seductively moody romance that engages both the heart and the mind. So, I apologize again that I rushed through those. I just, I rambled too much today. But that's not new. That's nothing new. But anyways, that is everything. That is everything for this month. Do let me know if you have any recommendations for streaming services I should add to the list of announcements and whatnot. There was something else I mentioned that I could possibly add, but I can't remember. But let me know. Uh, that being said, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to my rambles. Um, yes. So this month, this month, nothing will be changing. Did not intend for last month to change, but it did. This month will not be changing. Um, so for Cult of the Month next week, this is Raul's pick for his birthday because this, that episode of Cult of the Month will be releasing no shit on his actual birthday. So we will be reviewing From Dusk Till Dawn from 1996 for the review the like recent review of a film that's been recently released. Um, I was going to review this last month and then I found out that the release was so limited, it wasn't available in my city and now it has this wide release. So I'm going to be reviewing it this month. It's Cyrano. I don't know that I'm like actually interested in the story. I just really like Peter Dinklage. <laughs> but anyways, and then the review of something from my personal collection, uh, which will actually be episode 50. Can you believe that we made it to 50? Or we will be making it to 50. But I will be reviewing Legend from 1985. And then there is an extra Tuesday this month. This is the first extra Tuesday we've had since November. And we all know that November was a shit show for the podcast. So this is the first time since I don't actually know when that I've been able to actually do the bonus episode. I think it was August. It was August. August was the last bonus episode that actually got recorded. So, um, so this month for the bonus episode, I will be ranking all of the A24 films that I've seen. I haven't seen their entire catalog yet, unfortunately. I've been trying to, and then I keep forgetting and losing track. But I will be ranking all of the A24 films that I have seen. 
Hopefully I can get a guest for that to discuss with it. But for now, that is the plan for this month. And by for now, I mean that is concrete. It is the plan for this month. So, with that being said, you can find me everywhere at Lucky Peach, L-V-C-K-Y Peach, in the description of, the, of each episode, as well as on all my social medias. There is a link tree that will take you to my Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, Letterboxd, uh, Patreon itself, patreon.com slash Lucky Peach. YouTube, stickers, and something else that I, I'm always forgetting something from that list. Um, I am most active on uh, t- Twitter and Letterboxd. So, oh, and you can also email me with any questions at luckiestpeachpodcast at gmail.com. But, you know, oh, it, you know, it's not limited to emails. You can DM me on Twitter, whatever is easiest for you. Um, yeah, thank you to my patrons at patreon.com slash Lucky Peach. I really do appreciate you. Uh, Lucky's Peach stickers are available. Um, they are available at Kofi, ko-fi.com forward slash the luckiest peach. If you want to go check those out. I think that's everything. And of course, there will be links in the description of how you can support Ukraine uh, through this rough time. But, uh, yeah. Thank you again for listening. I'm sure I forgot something I always do, but that's okay. I'll remember eventually. But thank you. I'll see you guys next week for Cold of the Month review of From Dust Till Dawn with Raul. Stay peachy.